In this module, we'll identify the teen market segment so that we can target specific uh, marketing campaigns to the group using KMAS algorithm. The data that we'll be using for this purpose is gathered from social network sites and it was prepared by Dr. David Branch. The data was sampled evenly across four high school graduation years, that is from 2006 through 2009, representing the senior, junior, sophomore, and the freshman classes at the time of data collection. To prepare this data set, an automated web crawler was used to download the full text of social network profiles and the teen's gender, age, and the number of friends in his or her social network site was recorded. From the top 500 words appearing across the social network profiles of the teens, 36 random words were chosen and some of the words that were chosen were basketball, football, soccer, football, and likewise. So if we take a look at this data set, you will see that the first year represents the graduation year of the teen, the second column represents the gender, third column represents the age, and the fourth column represents the fourth. So um, I think the interesting part comes uh, or starts from the fifth column, which is basketball, and you will see that there are numbers representing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you know, 12, uh, to, and likewise. So what this means is that for this person right here who graduated in 2006, who we know that is a female from the from the data over here, and she is of age 19.4 years old, and she mentioned the word football one time in her social network profile. Likewise, if we scroll through our page, this female over here mentioned the word football three times in her profile and likewise this female again mentioned the word football two times in her profile so that is how we interpret this data set so what we're going to do next is using the r code uh, using the r code in the r studio we will try to cluster these teens so that so that the teens with similar interest groups are clustered together or at least belong to one cluster. So that's what we're trying to, that's what we will be trying to do in today's lecture and see if we can cluster the teens with similar interest group so that we can, uh, so that we can target specific market campaigns. For example, if, if the, if we can cluster the teens with, uh, with the interest in sports together, then maybe we can target, uh, you know, sports jerseys, or, you know, maybe we can target them with posters related to sports athletes. So those kind of uh, you know, marketing campaigns are, and those kinds of decisions related to marketing and promotions, uh, we can um, target to those groups. So that's what we're trying to do in today's lecture. So without further ado, let's get started with our R code. So over here, I already have the code written and prepared, and I'll also be providing you with a uh, uh, with, with a copy of this code, so I don't really have to worry about it. What I will do is I will explain you what this code does, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. So let's get started with the code. So as always, I have the first thing that I'll be do. I will be doing is setting the work directory. I have this R code, or you know, I have this data set. This data set that we'll be using in this folder over here. So if you have, you know, if you have it in a different folder, uh, which you will definitely do, so you will need to set the working directory and you will have to read the social network CSV file, which I already have done, done it over here. So I will run this code. And the next thing I'll do is this, uh, this syntax over here, the structure of teens is optional but i just put it you know but i just put it over here so that you know it's easier to see the structure of the data sets so you will see that this data this data set the the social network data set comprises of you know 30000 observations or 30000 rows of 40 different variables and it comprises of variables like you know graduation year gender age friends basketball and likewise as we begin with our analysis the first thing that we have to take care of is the missing values. So let's see if we have any missing values in our data set, which can be 
uh, which can be you know, observed or which can be uh, identified using this syntax over here. So from this, we know that uh, there are 22,054 records of female data and 5,222 male records. And out of, and out of this 30,000 observations that we have, 2,724 do not have any gender record or, you know, do not have any gender record, meaning that we do have the information on their, you know, interest. And maybe we also have the information on their graduation year, gen age, and the friends. But 2,724 do not really have any gender information. So that is something that we need to take care of before we move forward with our analysis. And again, uh, you know, and again, as I mentioned earlier, this is, uh, this data set is prepared using the using the social network or the social media profile of of the teens teens population or you know people who were in the uh, in the high school from 2006 to 2009 so if you look at this data set you will see that a lot of the uh, you know a lot of the age group a lot of the age record that we have you know it it a lot of the age record that we have you know falls outside the range of you know 13 to 20 meaning that if you scroll this data set let's do it right away so you will see that some of the records have the age of you know 106 21 90 and likewise so let's sort our data from you know by age from High, from lowest to the highest so you'll see that some of the age were recorded as you know three four which is very unlikely because the data that we gathered from was from the high school years so they must have been at least uh, 13 years old and and the age range that they must and the age range given this is a high school population should have been somewhere between 13 to 20 right so but as you scroll down this data set you will see that Okay, some of them do not really have an age group, but let's try and scroll. You'll see that like, you know, there are some of them are in 80 years old, 81, 90, which is very unlikely. So what we will do is any age, age group or any age range that falls outside the range of 13 to 20, we will treat them as, you know, missing variables. So that's what we that's what we will be doing next because because any age value falling outside the range you know falling outside the range of you know thirteen to twenty it does not really you know seem reasonable given given we know the fact given we know for a fact that you know this is this data set is collected from the teenage population from the high school years so to do that we will run this command and after we do that. So after we run this command, what, what will happen is that any age group, you know, for any teen population or for any teen record that we have, if their age is outside of this range, that age value will be treated as missing value or NA. So that, that's what we just did. So, so after we have done that, we will do some dummy coding for, for, for those records for which we do not have any gender information and the reason we need to do the dummy coding for the gender information is because that because if we take a look at our data set the gender uh, the gender record or the gender column also has a lot of missing values and one common technique for handling the missing values is to exclude any record with missing values however when we when we exclude those data we may act we may actually be removing a lot of you know a we may actually be removing a large portion of our data set usually if it is some your numeric variable uh, what we do is we replace the missing values with average or the mean data value but because gender is a categorical data we need to deal with this a little differently and for the categorical variables uh, in unlike the numerical variables we do, what we do is instead of imputing or instead of assigning the mean value for you know mean value for those uh, missing rows 
uh, for the categorical variable we do something called a dummy coding and in and during this process what we do what will we do what we usually do is we create another dummy variable for each label of nominal features except for one uh, except for one because the status of the third category can be inferred from the status of the first two for example let's say that we chose to have three categories for gender male female and unknown gender if someone is not a female and his or her gender has also not been mentioned or you know his or her gender has been uh, has been recorded as unknown then we know that if someone is not a female and not a known gender in a given data set then that person must be a male so therefore in this case uh, what we normally do is we only create dummy variables for female and unknown gender because once we have identified or once we have identified you know the person is not a female and not unknown gender then it it by default implies that that person must be a female so when we do dummy coding we only do for we only do the dummy coding for two uh, variables and we just let and we just don't do the dummy coding for the third variable because the status of the third variable can be identified from the from the status of the first two so that's exactly what we what we have been doing over here what we have done over here that is teens dollar female if else teens dollar gender equals to female and and if it's not empty or or that row is not uh, not uh, blank or not null then give it a value of one if not zero and likewise we have created another variable called no gender and this means that you know we are creating another variable or another column with the label of no gender and what we have done is if else if that value is uh, an a or if that value if that row is empty then give it a value of one if not give it a value of zero so if you so you can sort of take a look at our data sets this way just do it teens and if you do this you will sort of be able to view the data so if you scroll it all the way down oh sorry i need to run this first so take a look at this fifth row we know that the gender of this person is not known or we don't really have any information of uh you know we don't really have any information of the gender of this person of the fifth record so we will go over here and because the gender information of that person is not known this value will be assigned as one and if the gender information of that column is uh, is known or you know if if we have information of whether that person is a male or a female then that that row will be then this gender column will have a value of zero so that's what we did over here and over here we just tried you know this is again optional and the purpose of having this code is trying to see if there are any uh if our coding has worked so what this use any variable does is it will also incorporate um, the any values in here so we'll just be running this code and so this is what has happened so this this is you know this is not really important so but again let me just try to explain this code to you so uh what this table or uh, what this column did is what this command did is when you run this command teens dollar gender gender is the column or the information that was given to us from the data sets and if we run this command you will see that we have 2724 records that do not have any gender information and for the female column that's exactly uh, the information oh uh, sorry uh, okay so when you run this command teens dollar female which is the variable that we have created you will see that um almost 22 record are you know are recorded as female and seven seven thousand nine hundred forty six 
are have been identified as you know are labeled as zero meaning that it can be either male or you know unknown gender and if we do a table information of you know no gender then it will be one as you know 27 24 have no gender information